Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another Tulsa City County Library Build a Reader Story Time. I am Miss Tori. Let's get started. Hey, howdy, hello. It's a beautiful day. I'm glad you could join me as I talk and play. So come in. We'll write and sing. We'll smile for a while and I'll read a few things. I've got stories to share and so much to be done. But if we all work together, we can make the day fun. I'm so happy you're here, you know. Hey, howdy, hello. Let's go. All right. Bit of a windy day outside today. I think it's supposed to rain later, but I don't know. Um, so I like to start story time with bouncy songs. So I'm going to grab my pony. Here's Roach. Everyone say hi, Roach. Pony. We're going to do some bouncy songs. We're going to start with Jig Jog G. So if you have a lap to sit in, go ahead and sit in that lap. If you are the lap to sit in, we appreciate you. We appreciate you so much. Mother's Day is coming up, you guys. If you haven't got anything for mom yet, you should color her a picture. Okay, let's do some bouncy songs. I want someone to buy me a pony, jig jog, jig jog, jig jog, G. Not too fat and not too bony, jig jog, jig jog, jig jog, G. For I want to go for a ride all across the countryside with a jig jog, jig jog, jig jog, jig jog, jig jog, jig jog, G. Good job, you guys. Let's do another one. A hip, a hip, a hippopotamus got on, got on, got on the city bus, and all, and all, and all the people said, you're squishing us. But then, a cow, a cow, a cow got on the bus, and all, and all, and all the people said, move over. And then, a sheep, a sheep, a sheep got on the bus, and all, and all, and all the people said, back up. <laughs> okay, last bouncy song, which I don't know if I've mentioned this one's my favorite. A smooth road to London town, a smooth road to London town, the road goes up and the road goes down a smooth road to London town. But by and by we come to a wood and there the roads are not so good. A bumpy road, a bumpy road, a bumpy road to London town. A smooth road to London town. A smooth road to London town. The road goes up and the road goes down a smooth road to London town. But by and by we come to Adele and there the roads are not so swell. A rough road, a rough road, a rough road to London town. <laughs> and that one's my favorite because that's the one that all the mamas tell me that their babies keep singing after they get home after story time. So I hope you like it get stuck in your head a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna put Roach away now. Say bye-bye, Roach. So, while I've been at home, I've been doing a lot of baking. Have any of you guys been doing any baking? Do you guys make cookies and cupcakes and muffins and bread? So much baking. So I've got some stories for us today about Dessert. We're going to read about dessert. And this one, uh, this is Pinkalicious and the Cupcake Calamity. This one's kind of longish, but I like it. Pinkalicious and the Cupcake Calamity. This is by Victoria Khan. Or Can? I don't know. One Sunday morning, we saw a huge crowd outside Mr. Swizzle's ice cream shop. I stopped to see what was happening. Mr. 
Step right up, folks, Mr. Swizzle cried. Behind him was a pink curtain. Prepare your taste buds, said Mr. Swizzle. Dessert is about to be served. He lifted the curtain. The crowd gasped. Right in front of me was the biggest, fanciest machine in the world. Lights were flashing, gears were turning. It hummed, buzzed, and beeped. Behold, said Mr. Swizzle, my cupcake create medic Just add a dollar and your cupcake will bake right on the spot. I couldn't wait to try it. Doesn't that look like a fun machine? Me first, I said. I ran to the machine and put in my dollar. I chose a strawberry cupcake with pink frosting and pink sprinkles. I pressed the green button. Nothing happened. Bake, I said, pressing again. But no cupcake came out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me try, said Allison. One after the other, people put their money in, but nothing came out. What's going on here? The crowd started to grumble. People were getting upset. So was I. I wanted my cupcake. I'm so sorry, said Mr. Swizzle. Let me get the owner's guide. I'll have this fixed in a jiffy. I couldn't wait that long. I wanted a pink cupcake. Hmm, I thought. I looked hard at the machine. I walked around to the back. There was a little door big enough to squeeze through. So I did. The cupcake creatomatic was amazing inside. Mixing bowls whirred as batter stirred. Sprinkles and frosting drizzled everywhere. I started poking around. The batter was blending nicely. It tasted good, too. There were belts full of cupcake wrappers, all ready to be filled. I swapped out the plain ones for ones with pink polka dots. Then I saw that only half of the machine was working. The mixers weren't pouring batter into the wrappers. There must be a power switch in here somewhere, I said to myself. I looked up. And there it was. The switch was way up at the top of the machine. I climbed all the way there. It's cupcake time, I said as I flipped it on. The cupcake creatomatic started rumbling right away. In fact, it started rattling. Then it started shaking. Uh oh. I said. The machine started filling up with batter. I want to eat a cupcake, I said, not be a cupcake. Something was definitely wrong. The machine shook from side to side. The walls were starting to crack. What is going on? I cried. Boom! The next thing I knew, I was outside again. The walls of the machine had fallen down around me. I was sitting on top of the world's biggest cupcake. Pinkalicious, cried Mr. Swizzle. What are you doing up there? Are you okay? I blinked. I smiled. Yes, I am perfect. In fact, I couldn't be better, I said. The crowd roared with laughter. Mr. Swizzle looked relieved. Dig in, everyone, he said. Everyone loved the giant treat. Sorry about your machine, I told Mr. Swizzle. That's okay, Pinkalicious, he said. From now on, I'll stick to ice cream 
and leave the cupcakes to you. The end. So that was Pinkalicious and the Cupcake Calamity. If you like Pinkalicious, you should check out our digital services where we have the whole Pinkalicious series available for download. You can check those out from home with your library card. Now, since Mr. Swizzle decided he was going to stick with ice cream, we're going to read another story. This one is, should I share my ice cream? And this is an elephant and piggy story by Mo Willems. So Mo Willems, Elephant and Piggy, should I share my ice cream? And there's a little penguin and he says, ice cream, get your cold ice cream for a hot day. Oh boy, ice cream. One ice cream, please. Here you go. Oh boy, oh boy, I love ice cream. I do too. Wait. Piggy loves ice cream too. Piggy is my best friend. Should I share my ice cream with her? What do you think, everybody? Should he share? Should I share my awesome, yummy, sweet, super great, tasty, nice, cool ice cream? Hmm. Hmm. Maybe Piggy does not like this flavor. Sharing a flavor Piggy does not like would be wrong. I will eat the ice cream. Wait. Piggy will like this flavor. It is very yummy. I will share my ice cream. It will not be easy. Hey, Piggy is not here. She does not know I have ice cream. I will eat the ice cream! Where is Piggy? What if she is sad somewhere? I must find her. When I do, I will say, would you like some of my ice cream? Then she will say, thank you, that would cheer me up. Then I will give her my ice cream to share. Yum. Then my best friend will be happy. I will do it. I will share my ice cream. No! Now Piggy cannot have my ice cream. Now I cannot have any ice cream. I 
look sad. Would you like some of my ice cream? Thank you. That would cheer me up. Yum. Your friends. <gasps> Hang on. That was not my plan. This works too. The end. That was Elephant and Piggy, Should I Share My Ice Cream by Mo Willems. Mo Willems is one of my very favorite authors. You know who else is one of my favorite authors is James Dean, and he does Pete the Cat. And there is a cupcake book with Pete the Cat in it. Um, it's Pete the Cat and the Missing Cupcakes. And you can download that one from our Hoopla service, along with all the other Pete the Cat books. So let's uh, do some yoga real quick. I want everyone to take a deep breath. And let that out. Very relaxing. Okay, take another deep breath. Now let's be tall as a tree, wide as a house, thin as a pin, small as a mouse. Tall as a tree, wide as a house, thin as a pin, small as a mouse. Tall as a tree, wide as a house, thin as a pin, and small as a mouse. And can you squeak like a mouse? Squeak, squeak, squeak. Sing us a little song. You're my honey bun, sugar plum, plummy, yummy, yumpkin. You're my sweetie pie. You're my cappy cake, gumdrop, schnookum, schnookum. You're the apple of my eye. And I love you so, and I want you to know that I'll always be right here. And I love to sing sweet songs to you, because you are so dear. All right, let's do some stuff with our hands now. Let's finger dance up, finger dance down, finger dance out, and all around the town. Finger dance on your shoulders. Finger dance on your head, finger dance on your belly, and then put your fingers to bed. Very good. I have one more cupcake story for us. This is called Klondike. Do not eat that those cupcakes. And it's by Amanda Driscoll. So here's Klondike. He is a seal. Do you see this? So Klondike is a seal. And this is Klondike, do not eat those cupcakes. You're invited to a princess birthday party. Klondike, do not eat those cupcakes. Hello, Klondike. Yes, those cupcakes look delicious. Yes, I know you love cupcakes. A lot. But you heard your mother. No cupcakes until your sister's birthday party. Yes, Klondike. It is hard to wait. Really? Truly, very, extremely hard to wait, but you can do it. No, Klondike, you cannot have just one bite, not even a nibble. I saw that. Pretend the cupcakes are squid sandwiches or tube worm tacos. 
or curried crabs. Oh, right. Seals love squid sandwiches, tube warm tacos, and curried, curried crabs. <sighs> okay. My highly trained guard dog bruiser will protect these cupcakes. That's very disappointing, bruiser. Look, Klondike! A magician is here for the party! Check that there's nothing in his hat and nothing up his sleeve. Now watch closely as he pulls an arctic hair out of his hat. Hocus Pocus! Ta-da! Bogus. Klondike, don't do this. Think about your sister. Please? Pretty please? What do you think? Is he going to be able to resist? Klondike, do not eat those cupcakes. Oh, boy. Klondike, do not eat those cupcakes. Yikes. Klondike, do not eat those cupcakes. <gasps> Klondike, you ate those cupcakes. Don't even try to deny it. The dog did not make you do it. Oh my gosh, he ate all of them. Uh-oh. Here comes your mother. And look at your poor sister. There will be no cupcakes at her party. No candles to blow out. No wishes to make. Unless... What is he thinking? Now this I have to see. Oh look, he's baking. You did it! <laughs> Nicely done, Klondike! Yes, I know you love your sister a lot. Oh, you made a treat for me too? Uh, that's very um, thoughtful. Hey Klondike, it's finally party time. You know what that means? Klondike, eat those cupcakes. The end. Klondike, do not eat those cupcakes by Amanda Driscoll. I love that one. Seals are fun. All right. I think we have time for one more song. Turn the page. There we go. I woke up this morning, smiled at the rising sun. Three little birds were by my doorstep, singing a sweet song, melody pure and true, singing. This is my message to you. Sing and don't worry about a thing. Cause every little thing gonna be alright. Sing and don't worry about a thing. Cause every little thing is gonna be alright. That's a Bob Marley song. Bob Marley song. I didn't write that one. Gotta tell you people. All right. 
that's about all the time we've got for stories for this segment, but we're going to have more stories in just a few minutes after we take a little break. So here's our goodbye song in case you're not joining us for the next part. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. Well, goodbye, everybody. Well, goodbye, everybody. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. All right. So remember, you can download that Pinkalicious book on our digital services. If you have any problems with your library card, you can call 549-READ, and our help desk can sort that out for you so you can download some books. Um, again, thanks for joining me. I am Miss Tori with the Tulsa City County Library, and stick around after the break. We'll have more stories. All right, welcome back for part two, Tulsa City County Library, Build a Reader Storytime, and I am Miss Tori. Hey, howdy, hello, it's a beautiful day. I'm glad you could join me as I talk and play, so come in. We'll write and sing, we'll smile for a while, and I'll read a few things. I've got stories to share and so much to be done. But if we all work together, we can make the day fun. I'm so happy you're here, you know. Hey, howdy, hello, let's go. All right. So welcome back for segment two. This is when I read uh, some slightly longer books or sillier books for the elementary aged kids. 
And uh, so today I've got this one, which is called Do Not Open This Book. Do not, do not open this book. And it's by Adam Larript, illustrated by Matthew Forsyth. And it says right there on the cover, do not open this book. I'm going to open it anyway. Come on this journey with me. Oh, there's warning signs. Come on, seriously? Okay, whatever. I guess you don't mind being mauled by... Ma mauled by... I don't know what that word is supposed to be. Here's the last guy who read this book. Oh, please, it can't be that bad. Wait! Don't turn the page! I think those warnings are for other people, right? Warning, do not open this book. Well, we already opened it, so might as well carry on. Danger, it says. Maybe you should put this book back. You don't want to let the monkeys out. Oh, oh, I love monkeys. I would love to let the monkeys out. Let's do it. Why did you turn the page? Didn't you see the warning? Stay on this page. You're safe here. This is a good page. I like this one. Stay on. Let's see. Stop. Wrong way. Go back. Please. But there's monkeys. Oh, should we stay on this page? Oh, no. Now you've done it. Look, it's monkey. We saw one. Yay. Monkey. Oh, there's, there's a whole bunch of monkeys. Hang on, is that my guitar? What are they doing? Are they, are they painting something? They're painting something. What are they painting? Hey, don't steal the question mark. I need that. What a mess. Naughty monkeys. It could be worse. Do not tempt fate by turning the page, please. I mean, what could be worse? Besides, all the monkeys are asleep. It's probably fine. It's probably fine. It's probably fine. Oops. Monkeys and toucans? Two cans woke up all the monkeys. Can you stop now? Everything used to be so good. Wait. Did you hear that noise? That didn't sound like monkeys. I didn't know there were alligators in this book. It's an alligator. Nobody said there were alligators in this book. That wasn't on any of the warning signs. This is a catastrophe. This calls for extreme measures. Only you can make things right. You should set a trap. How are we going to do that? Oh. This will surely work. It's a great trap. See, alligators love toucans and monkeys, and toucans and monkeys love bananas, so you can catch them all in this book. That's the plan. Okay, got our banana. Quiet now. Shh. Don't scare.
scare them. You need to be silent so they don't run away. This is your big chance. When I say go, you close the book. Ready? Set. <gasps> go! <laughs> well, warning, do not open this book by Adam Larratt. We should have listened to him. We should not have opened the book. That was a silly mistake. Let's sing a silly song to go with our silly mistake. Let's do our llama song. So give me our llama. Give me another llama. Gonna go da 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 Happy llama, sad llama, mentally disturbed llama, super llama, drama llama, big fat mama llama. Here's a llama, there's a llama, everywhere a llama, da 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 Moose, turtle, moose, turtle, moose, turtle, moose, moose, turtle. Is that a llama? No, it's not a llama, da 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 Happy llama, sad llama, mentally disturbed llama, super llama, drama llama, big fat mama llama. Here's a llama, there's a llama, everywhere a llama, da da da. There's a llama song, like the llama song. Okay, now we're gonna sing Miss Murphy's Chowder. And um, I had a request to slow this one right down so you could learn the words. So we're gonna do that. Won't you bring back, won't you bring back Mrs. Murphy's chowder? It was tuneful, every spoonful made you yodel louder. After dinner, Uncle Ben used to fill his fountain pen from a bowl of Mrs. Murphy's chowder. Okay, slowing it right down for you. There was ice cream, cold cream, benzene, gasoline, soup, beans, string beans floating all around. Sponge cake, beef steak, mistake, stomach ache, cream puffs, earmuffs, many to be found. Silk hats, doormats, bed slats, democrats, cowbells, doorbells, beckon you to dine. Meatballs, fish balls, mothballs, cannonballs, come on in, the chowder's fine. Won't you bring back, won't you bring back Mrs. Murphy's chowder? It was tuneful, every spoonful made you yodel louder. If they have it where you are, you might find a subway car in a bowl of Mrs. Murphy's chowder. There was ice cream, cold cream, benzene, gasoline, soup beans, string beans floating all around. Sponge cake, beef steak, mistake, stomach ache, cream puffs, earmuffs, many to be found. Silk hats, doormats, bed slats, democrats, cowbells, doorbells, beckon you to dine. Meatballs, fish balls, mothballs, cannonballs, come on in, the chowder's fine. Won't you bring back, won't you bring back? Mrs. Murphy's chowder, it was tuneful, every spoonful made you yodel louder. My goldfish died the other day, and we embalmed him right away in a bowl of Mrs. Murphy's chowder. There was ice cream, cold cream, benzene, gasoline, soup beans, string beans floating all around. Sponge cake, beef steak, mistake, stomach ache, cream puffs, earmuffs, many to be found. Silk hats, doormats, bed slats, democrats, cowbells, doorbells, beckon you to dine. Meatballs, fish balls, mothballs, cannonballs, come on in, the chowder's fine. Now we're gonna speed it up really fast. There was ice cream, cold cream, benzene, gasoline, soup beans, string beans floating all around. Sponge cake, beef steak, mistake, stomach ache, cream puffs, earmuffs, many to be found. 
Silk hats, doormats, bed slats, democrats, cowbells, doorbells, beckon you to dine. Meatballs, fish balls, mothballs, cannonballs, come on in, the chowder's fine. That was Mrs. Murphy's Chowder, which I first learned in like second grade. That's how I know it's perfect for that age group. Okay, so how did we trap the monkeys? We used a banana. So I've got another story for us. This is Pete the Cat and the Bad Banana. Pete the Cat, and it's got a shiny cover, so it got my light on it. Pete the Cat and the Bad Banana by James Dean. And I tell you again, this one and all the Pete the Cat books are available for digital download on the library's uh, digital services. I know this one's on Hoopla. And Hoopla books are always available all the time with no waiting. So if you like Pete the Cat, you can check out Pete the Cat and the Bad Banana. Pete the Cat is eating a banana. Pete loves bananas. They are sweet and tasty and easy to peel. Every morning, Pete puts a banana in his cereal. Sometimes Pete puts a banana on his peanut butter sandwich. But one day, Pete eats a bad banana. The banana is gross. The banana is mushy. The banana is yucky. Pete's tummy hurts. Oh no, he has to take the pink stuff. I hate the pink stuff. I will not eat bananas again, Pete tells his mom. I don't blame you, Pete. Pete's mom tries to help. She bakes Pete's favorite banana bread. Pete will not touch it. It might have bad banana in it. She makes Pete a banana cream pie. Pete will not eat it. She gets Pete a big banana split. Ooh. No thanks, Pete says. Oh my gosh. He's really off of bananas, isn't he? Instead, Pete tries a lemon. It is yellow like a banana. Pete tastes it. Yuck, says Pete. The lemon is sour. Yeah, lemons aren't for eating raw. Mm -mm. Pete tries a pickle. It's long like a banana. Pete tastes it. Better, Pete says but not as good as a banana. Oh, I beg to differ, Pete. I like pickles. Pete tries an orange. It has to be peeled like a banana. They're not as easy to peel though. The orange is sweet, but it is too juicy. It makes Pete's paws sticky. Pete tries fish, Plums, rice, hot dogs, watermelon, and his mom's nut bread. Pete eats them all. He's not hungry for bananas anymore. But are any of those things like a banana? Let's see. Plums are fruit. Bananas are fruit. They don't taste the same. Hot dogs are long like bananas. They're still not the same. I don't know. Then comes the big race. What should Pete have for breakfast? A pickle? No, Pete doesn't eat pickles for breakfast. That would be a silly breakfast food. A hot dog. No, Pete just had a hot dog for dinner last night. A lemon. No. That's just silly. 
Pete wants a banana. They're yummy and healthy. Bananas are the best. Do you have another banana? Pete asks. Of course, says Greg the monkey. Pete peels the banana slowly. It is not brown. It is not meshy. Pete takes a teeny tiny bite. It is a yummy banana. It's the best banana ever. Thanks to Greg and his banana, Pete wins the race. Pete is bananas for bananas. So that's Pete the cat and the bad banana. Yeah. If you take a bite of something and it doesn't taste right, you shouldn't finish it. That's a good lesson. I did that once when I was a child. I really liked cottage cheese. And then I had a bite of cottage cheese that was no good. And I didn't like cottage cheese after that. But I like it now. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. There was an old woman who swallowed a fly. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'll die. There was an old woman who swallowed a spider that wiggled and jiggled and squiggled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'll die. There was an old woman who swallowed a bird. How absurd to swallow a bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wiggled and jiggled and swiggled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. Perhaps she'll die. There was an old woman who swallowed a cat. Imagine that to swallow a cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wiggled and jiggled and squiggled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed that fly. We may never know. There was an old woman who swallowed a dog. What a hog to swallow a dog. She swallowed the dog to catch the cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wiggled and jiggled and swiggled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. And I don't know why she swallowed the fly. It's just weird. There was an old woman who swallowed a goat, just opened her throat and swallowed a goat. She swallowed the goat to catch the dog. She swallowed the dog to catch the cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wiggled and jiggled and squiggled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. And I don't know why she swallowed that fly. Maybe it was that keto diet everybody's on. There was an old woman who swallowed a horse. She died, of course. It's the dangers of overeating. Which, I don't know about you, but I've been eating a lot since I've been home. Okay. There was a tree out in the wood. The prettiest tree you ever did see there's a tree in the hole in the hole in the ground and the green grass grows all around all around and the green grass grows all around and on this tree there was a branch the prettiest branch you ever did see there's a branch on a tree and a tree in a hole in a hole in the ground and the green grass grows all around, all around, and the green grass grows all around. And on this branch, there was a nest, the prettiest nest you ever did see. I don't know what makes a nest pretty. 
builds a nest on a branch and a branch on a tree and a tree and a hole and a hole in the ground and the green grass grows all around all around the green grass grows all around and in this nest there was an egg the prettiest egg you ever did see there's an egg and a nest and a nest and a branch and a branch and a tree and a tree and a hole and a hole in the ground and the green grass grows all around all around and the green grass grows all around where did i leave off it was an egg yes and in this egg there was a bird the prettiest bird you ever did see there's a bird and an egg and an egg and a nest and a nest and a branch and a branch and a tree and a tree and the hole and the hole in the ground and the green grass grows all around, all around, and the green grass grows all around. And on this bird, there was a wing, the prettiest wing you ever did see. There's a wing on the bird, and a bird, and an egg, and an egg, and a nest, and a nest, and a branch, and a branch, and a tree, and a tree, and the hole, and the hole in the ground. I don't know how we know there's a wing on a bird inside an egg. I don't know that. And the green grass grows all around, all around, and the green grass grows all around. And on this wing, there was a feather, the prettiest feather you ever did see. Feather on a wing and a wing on a bird and a bird and an egg and an egg and a nest and a nest and a branch and a branch and a tree and a tree in the hole and the hole in the ground and the green grass grows all around all around and the green grass grows all around and the green grass grows all around all around and the green grass grows all around. And the green grass grows all around. All right. One more thing I wanted to do before we end our story time is a song with some silly words in it, um, because we're going to use that in our next uh, story time segment. So let's let's work on this. This is called a Ram Sam Sam, and it's a camp out song. So it's something that you sing when you go camping. So and it's got some hand motions. We're going to do it together. It goes like this. A ram sam sam, a ram sam sam, gooly 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 gooly, and a ram sam sam, a ram sam sam, a ram sam sam, gooly 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 gooly, and a ram sam sam. Oh Raffy, oh Raffy, gooly 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 gooly, and a ram sam sam. Oh Raffy, oh Raffy, gooly 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 gooly, and a ram sam sam. Now, I have no idea what those words mean. No idea. It's just something I learned as a kid. But I also learned this one. This one's a little easier to remember. A Pizza Hut, a Pizza Hut, a Kentucky Fried Chicken and a Pizza Hut. A Pizza Hut, a Pizza Hut, Kentucky Fried Chicken and a Pizza Hut. McDonald's, McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken and a Pizza Hut. McDonald's, McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken and a Pizza Hut. <laughs> so, silly songs. I like my silly songs. All right. So, that's, that's it for story time segment two. Remember... Pete the Cat books are available for digital download. I can't get over this shiny cover, you guys. Pete the Cat books by James Dean are available for digital download on the library's digital services. If you need help with that, just call 549-READ and we can help you uh, figure out your library card, your password, uh, and how the digital services work. We also have instructional videos on our website, tulsalibrary.org. If you click on uh, TCCL um, Digital Academy, I think it is, uh, then instructional videos if you're comfortable with technology and you can do it at home. So I'm going to sing our goodbye song and then we're going to take a little break and then we'll come back for more stories and silly songs. So here's our goodbye song. Thank you. 
Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. Well, goodbye, everybody. Well, goodbye, everybody. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. Can you sing it in a silly voice? Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. Well, goodbye, everybody. Well, goodbye, everybody. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. Extra silly. I like it. How would a monkey sing it? Probably they would steal your bananas. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. Well, goodbye, everybody. Well, goodbye, everybody. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. All right. Take a little break now, and we're going to be back in a couple of minutes for more stories and more songs. So, see you soon. Welcome to Storytime Segment 3, Tulsa City County Library, Builder Reader Storytime. Miss Tori, reading books, singing songs. Here's our hello song. Hey, howdy, hello. 
It's a beautiful day. I'm glad you could join me as I talk and play. So come in. We'll write and sing. We'll smile for a while and we'll read a few things. I've got stories to share. And so much to be done. But if we all work together, we can make the day fun. I'm so happy you're here, you know. Hey, howdy, hello. Let's go. Right. This is story time segment three. That means I've already done two of these. This is number three. We're going to start with some bouncy songs. I'm going to grab my pony. This is Roach. Say hi, Roach. And we're going to do some bounces. Um, bounces are great for bonding between uh, parents and guardians and their little ones. And also for helping babies develop rhythm. So, they're, And also they're fun and I love them. So... Let's do some bounces. I want someone to buy me a pony. Jig, jog, jig, jog, jig, jog, jig. Not too fat and not too bony. Jig, jog, jig, jog, jig, jog, jig. Sway. For I want to go for a ride all across the countryside with a jig, jog, jig, jog, jig, jog, jig, jog, jig, jog, jig, jog, jig. This is the way the ladies ride. Quip, quip, clap. And this is the way the gentlemen ride. Trot, trot, trot. And this is the way the farmers ride. Hobbledy ho, hobbledy ho, hobbledy, hobbledy, hobbledy ho. I like my pony themed bounces. A smooth road to London town, a smooth road to London town. The road goes up and the road goes down, a smooth road to London town. But by and by we come to a wood and there the roads are not so good. A bumpy road, a bumpy road, a bumpy road to London town. A smooth road to London town, a smooth road to London town. The road goes up and the road goes down, a smooth road to London town. Back. By and by we come to a dell and there the roads are not so swell. A rough road, a rough road, a rough road to London town. Okay, good bounces everybody. You can get off everyone's laps now. We're going to put Roach away. Say bye-bye, Roach. Bye-bye, Roach. So one thing that Roach and I like to do in the springtime is we like to go camping. Love to go camping. We don't actually like to go outside. You don't have to go outside to go camping. Did you know that? You can just get a blanket, and you can make a blanket fort out of the couch cushions or the table, if mom and dad say it's okay, or just a couple of chairs. Blanket forts are fabulous. And then you can go camping, or you can actually set out a tent outside if you've got a nice yard. Um, but today I've got stories for us about camping. So this one is Biscuit Goes Camping. Biscuit Goes Camping, and it's by Alyssa Satin Cappuccilli. Cappuccilli. And the biscuit books, I want to point out, are available for digital download from our digital collection. So if you like books about small, adorable dogs and who doesn't, then you can get more biscuit books online. I had hoped my dogs would be in here today, but they're not. I'll try calling them. I hear them. Let's start the story. This way, Biscuit. It's time to go camping. Woof, woof. There you go. Come on, dog. Reading a dog book. You have to join us. There we go. We have our tent. See, you don't need a real tent. She's just putting a blanket over the clothesline. We have our flashlight and blankets, too. Woof, woof. Silly. 
really, Peppy. No tugging. It's time to go camping. Woof. Wait, Biscuit. What have you found? Woof, woof. Ribbit. You found a frog, Biscuit. Woof, woof. Ooh. Scary noise. Funny, Peppy. It's only the wind, Biscuit. There's so many new sights and sounds when you go camping. Woof. Oh, Biscuit. What have you found now? Woof, woof. Link. It's a firefly biscuit. The firefly says good night. It's time for us to say good night too, biscuit. Curl up, biscuit. Woof, woof. Crack, crack, boom, boom. Uh oh. That's not good camping weather. Here comes the rain. How can we go camping now? Woof, 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 woof. Biscuit, wait for me. Woof. Smart puppy. You found the perfect place to go camping. Some firefly. One time I was laying in bed at night and my ceiling started blinking and I didn't realize it was a firefly. I was so convinced it was a ghost. It was scary for a minute there, but then I laughed at myself because it was only a firefly trapped in my house. All right. Mm -hmm. Here's the song I sang an hour ago. You're my honey bun, sugar plum, plummy yummy yumpkin. You're my sweetie pie. You're my cuppy cake gumdrop, schnookum schnookum. You're the apple of my eye. And I love you so, and I want you to know I'll always be right here. And I love to sing sweet songs to you because you are so dear. Okay, now, that book had a lot of night noises in it, so I thought we would sing Good Night by the Lori Berkner Band, uh, which involves a lot of animal noises, and it's also just a sweet little song. I gotta play the right chords, though. Oh, I'm a little frog and my daddy loves me. I'm a little frog and my mommy loves me. When they tuck me in to say goodnight, they say, Ribbit, 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 goodnight. Goodnight, goodnight. Goodnight, little frog, goodnight. Goodnight, goodnight. Ribbit, 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 good night. Oh, I'm a little owl and my daddy loves me. I'm a little owl and my mommy loves me. When they tuck me in to say good night, they say, hoo, 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 good night, good night, good night. Good night, little owl, good night, good night. Good night. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Good night. What other animals should we do? We could do a dog. 
Biscuit's a dog. Oh, I'm a little dog and my daddy loves me. I'm a little dog and my mommy loves me. When they tuck me in to say goodnight, they say, what do dogs say? Woof, 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 good night. Good night, good night. Good night, little dog, good night. Good night, good night. Woof, 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 good night. And now we should do a silly one. I like to do a tiger because that's part of the original Lori Berkner band song. Oh, I'm a little tiger and my daddy loves me. I'm a little tiger and my mommy loves me. When they tuck me in to say good night, they say, rawr, rawr, rawr. good night, good night, good night. Good night, good night little tiger, good night. Good night, good night. Rawr, 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 good night. I'm a little kid and my daddy loves me. I'm a little kid and my mommy loves me. And when they tuck me in to say good night, they say, good night, honey, good night. Good night, good night. Good night, little darling, good night. Good night, good night. Good night, good night, good night. Good night, good night. Good night, sleep tight, good night. Good night, good night. Good night, good night, good night. All right, that's the Good Night Song by Lori Berkner Band. Okay, got another camping book for us. This one is Pete the Cat Goes Camping. This is our second Pete the Cat book of the day. Can't get enough Pete the Cat. Pete the Cat Goes Camping. By James Dean. Pete is excited to go camping. This is his first time. Don't forget your sleeping bag, says Dad. Or your hiking boots, Mom says. The campsite is deep in the woods. Mom and Dad set up the tent. Pete and Bob, that's Pete's brother, help collect sticks so they can make a fire later. Fun times. Pete and Bob go for a hike. Bob shows Pete the footprints of different animals. Do you think we'll see anything cool? Asks Pete. Maybe, says Bob. Sunnies are cool. I'm happy when I see those. Pete and his dad go fishing. They must be very quiet shh, and very still to catch a fish. Do you ever go fishing? Fishing takes a long time. They finally catch some fish. Mom builds a fire. She cooks the fish for dinner. It tastes yummy. Next, Pete toasts marshmallows. Pete makes s'mores with chocolate and graham crackers. It starts to get dark out. Bob tells Pete a story about a scary, hairy giant. The giant lives in the woods. His name is Bigfoot. Do you think Bigfoot lives here? Asks Pete. No one has ever seen Bigfoot before, says Bob. Don't let Bob scare you, says Dad. 
Bigfoot is not real, Mom says. Pete sighs with relief. Whew. But if he is real, I bet he's friendly, says Dad. And likes s'mores, too. Everybody likes s'mores. Except dogs. Dogs can't have chocolate. That's not scary, thinks Pete. Maybe he wants a s'more. Pete leaves one for his hairy friend. Do you see how you make a s'more? You use crackers with marshmallows and chocolate, and it makes kind of a sandwich. And the chocolate gets all melty, and the marshmallows get all gooey. Those are wonderful. Soon it's time for bed. Lights out, boys, Dad says. Bob and Pete share a tent. Pete gets into his sleeping bag. It is cozy, but he cannot sleep. The woods seem extra dark, and all the sounds seem extra loud at night. Pete hears a weird swooshing sound. What is that? He asks Bob. That's just the wind, says Bob. Pete hears an odd chirping noise. What's that? He asks out loud. Those are just the crickets. Pete hears a strange hooting sound. Hoo, hoo. What is that? He wonders. That's just an owl. Pete thinks of his friend Owl. Pete hears a loud snapping sound. Crack! What is that? He wonders. But Bob is already fast asleep. Pete listens carefully. Crack! Is it Bigfoot? Pete peeks outside. It's too dark to see anything. When Pete wakes up, he checks the spot where he left the s'more for Bigfoot. The s'more is gone! There is a note. It says, thanks for the treat, XOXO. That means hugs and kisses, XOXO. Pete shows his family. Wow! I knew Bigfoot was real, says Bob. Pete knows Bigfoot is not scary. Just because he looks different does not mean he is scary. He even likes s'mores, too. Who's that in the bushes? I think Bigfoot is watching. That was Pete the Cat Goes Camping. So. And I was teaching you guys a fun camping song with silly words in it. So let's do that again. We're going to do a Ram Sam Sam. It goes like this. A Ram Sam Sam, a Ram Sam Sam, gooly, 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 and a Ram Sam Sam. A Ram Sam Sam, a Ram Sam Sam, gooly, 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 and a Ram Sam Sam. Oh, Rafi, oh, Rafi, gooly, 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 and a Ram Sam Sam. Oh, Rafi, oh, Rafi, gooly, 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 and a Ram Sam Sam. And if you don't like the silly word version, you can also sing a Pizza Hut, a Pizza Hut, a Kentucky Fried Chicken and a Pizza Hut, a Pizza Hut, a Pizza Hut, a Kentucky Fried Chicken and a Pizza Hut, McDonald's, McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken and a Pizza Hut, McDonald's, McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken and a Pizza Hut. It's a silly camping song. Okay, other story I thought I'd share with you guys is Scaredy Squirrel Goes Camping. And I don't know that we've got time to read the whole thing, but I'll sum it up for you. So Scaredy Squirrel Goes Camping by Melanie Watt. 
And the Scaredy Squirrel books are also available for digital download. Scaredy Squirrel goes camping. Warning! Scaredy Squirrel insists you check your zippers before reading this book. He's afraid of zippers. If you've read his other stories, then you, you know about that. Scaredy Squirrel goes camping. Scaredy Squirrel never goes camping. He'd rather be comfortable inside than risk going out in the rugged wilderness. Besides, setting up camp seems like a lot of trouble. A few troublemakers Scaredy Squirrel is afraid could get too close for comfort, skunks. Mosquitoes, they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. Quicksand, you never know. Uh, the three bears, penguins, and zippers. Mm -hmm. So he finds a simple way to sit back and enjoy camping from a safe distance. Television. <laughs> Look, there's all kinds of camping shows coming up in the TV guide. We don't have TV guides anymore. How old is this book? I don't know. Scaredy Squirrel sets up his new television, but he realizes there's a problem. He needs to plug it in. Reaching the nearest electrical outlet will require major survival skills. A few supplies Scaredy Squirrel needs to pack. A really long extension cord, popsicles, tomato juice, cement, a fan. It just He's got his wilderness outfit. Includes nose plugs, very important, to bypass nasty odors. Walkie-talkie, the scaredy motto, a prepared camper is a happy camper. He's got his map. Mosquitoes are itching to get you. Fan yourself to blow off these thirsty critters. Wherever there are coolers, Penguins rule. They're as cold as ice and won't warm up to you. Toss popsicles to occupy their sharp beaks. That's why he packed the popsicles. The rubber boot camp. So, so here's some exercises to get ready for camping. First you bend sideways, then you bend over backwards, and then you bend frontwards, and then you reach up tall. Repeat 143 times, it says. That would be a great workout. And you can also run an obstacle course to practice. And if it's sunny, that's a good time. If there's volcano activity, don't go. The following afternoon, right on schedule, Scaredy Squirrel proceeds toward the campground. He's got his extension cord for his TV. He's looking for an outlet, remember. Scaredy tugs. He pulls. He looped the loops. But suddenly, a penguin appears! This was not part of the plan. <laughs> Look, it's just a mini golf course. That's all. But Scaredy Squirrel doesn't know that. Scaredy Squirrel panics. He spins. He dashes. He bolts. He crashes. He takes cover and plays dead. 30 minutes later. One hour later. Two hours later. Oh. Scaredy Squirrel finally gets the drift. He forgets all about the skunks, mosquitoes, quicksand, three bears, penguins, and zippers. The wilderness isn't meant to be seen from afar. It's meant to be enjoyed up close. Scaredy breathes the fresh air, savors roasted marshmallows, gazes up at the stars, gathers pine cones, listens to songs, and gets comfortable. Early the next morning, Scaredy Squirrel plugs in his extension cord and follows it back home. The wild adventure has inspired him to approach camping differently.
He's using a toaster to roast his marshmallows because some things are worth the trouble. So that was Scaredy Squirrel Goes Camping. Another book you can download at home. So we talked about camping and we talked about s'mores, which are a great part of camping. We sang a silly camp song and uh, now we're going to do our goodbye song. I do have one more story time segment left. We're just going to take a little break and then we'll be right back with more stories. And I actually have more stories about camping for you. So here's our goodbye song. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. Well, goodbye, everybody. Well, goodbye, everybody. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. Silly voice. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. Well, goodbye, everybody. Well, goodbye, everybody. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. Well, goodbye, everybody. Well, goodbye, everybody. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. Stick around for more stories in a few minutes. Okay, 
Welcome everybody to our final segment of the day for Tulsa City County Library Build a Reader Story Time. We're going to read some camping stories, but first, hey, howdy, hello. It's a beautiful day. I'm glad you could join me as I talk and play. So come in. We'll write and sing. We'll smile for a while and I'll read a few things. I've got stories to share and so much to be done. But if we all work together, we can make the day fun. I'm so happy you're here, you know. Hey, howdy, hello. Let's go. All right. So camping stories today. Camping stories because I like to go camping when the weather is nice in the spring. It's one of the best times to do it. Uh, but first, let's do our llama song and get that out of the way. So make us a llama. We get another llama. Got two llamas. Okay. Da 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 da. Happy llama, sad llama, mentally disturbed llama, super llama, drama llama, big fat mama llama. Here's a llama, there's a llama, everywhere a llama, da 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 Moose, turtle, moose, turtle, moose, turtle, moose, moose, turtle. Is that a llama? No, it's not a llama. Da 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 da. Happy llama, sad llama, mentally disturbed llama, super llama, drama llama, big fat mama llama. Here's a llama, there's a llama, everywhere a llama. Da da da. Llama song, and a camping song. A ram sam sam, a ram sam sam, gooly 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 gooly, and a ram sam sam, a ram sam sam, a ram sam sam, gooly 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 gooly, and a ram sam sam. Oh Raffi, oh Raffi, gooly 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 gooly, and a ram sam sam. Oh Raffi, oh Raffi, gooly 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 gooly, and a ram sam sam. A pizza hut, a pizza hut, a Kentucky Fried Chicken and a pizza hut, a pizza hut, a pizza hut, a Kentucky Fried Chicken and a pizza hut, McDonald's, McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken and a pizza hut, McDonald's, McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken and a pizza hut. All good things. Unless you're camping, then you don't need those because you're going to have s'mores. We'll talk about s'mores in a minute. First, we're going to read Camp Rex by Molly Idol. I love Molly Idol's illustrations. She does some really cute stuff. <clears throat> One of her other books is called T-Rex. Get it? T T-Rex? Is it just me? Okay. T-Rex. Camp Rex is what we're reading today. There's a wilderness guidebook. Probably they're going to share some of the advice in that book with us. Camp Rex by Molly Idol. Searching for an outing to enjoy with your friends? Consider camping! The fresh air and exercise are invigorating. Remember to stay together as a group. And stick to the trail. Yeah, you don't want to get lost in the woods. When you reach the campsite, find the perfect place to pitch your tent. Uh-oh. Triceratops is having a little trouble with the tent there. Oh, and the T-Rex has to wear his tent as a hat. Once you've made a camp, you can explore the surrounding area. Learning about the local flora and fauna can be great fun. Poisonous plants. So long as you take care to avoid dangerous plants like 
poison ivy. Oh, no. And refrain from disturbing the natural landscape. Uh-oh. T-Rex, that's not a pine cone. Run! Don't disturb the natural landscape or its inhabitants. If the opportunity presents itself, there's nothing more refreshing than a dip in a mountain lake or a bit of canoeing. You may even catch a fish or two for supper. After all, the seasoned camper enjoys gathering wood, kindling a flame, and cooking over a properly prepared campfire. Do you see they're burning? Their broken canoe. But the T-Rex is going to add to the fire. Oh, no, he's just going to use that to roast his marshmallows. A traditional sing-along and marshmallow roast always brings campers closer together. Telling spooky stories can be fun, too, until it's time to turn in. Before you fall asleep, it's lovely to listen to the soothing sounds of the forest all around you. think she can sleep. In the morning, you'll wake refreshed and ready to head on the trail again. She doesn't look very refreshed. For experienced campers are as much at home in the great outdoors as they are in their own backyard. Do you see her roasting marshmallows over the barbecue grill? And the raccoon followed them home. So they talked about some fun camping activities in that book. Uh, for example, gathering around a fire for a sing-along and roasting marshmallows. But what if you can't go camping right now? What if you have to stay home? Well, did you know you could camp in your backyard or you could camp in your living room? You don't have to go out to the forest to camp. Um, but how are you going to make a s'more without a fire? I'm here to help. First, parents, did you know that you can make s'mores over the stove? If you're willing to uh, help your children make their s'mores, you can put a little bit of butter in the bottom of a pan on low heat, put your graham cracker in there, put chocolate on top of that, and set a marshmallow right on top. When the marshmallow starts to get all melty, your s'more is done. But the other thing you can do is you can do cheating s'mores. I have the recipe for you here. Okay, first you want to take your graham cracker. Then you want to get marshmallow cream. It comes in a jar and you spread it with a knife just like peanut butter. You'll put your marshmallow cream on your graham cracker and you top that with chocolate chips or M&Ms, whatever you feel. You could also do Hershey bars whatever chocolate you prefer. But these are cheating s'mores. It's great for if you're camping in your living room or if you're camping in your backyard and you don't have a place to build a fire or if 
you go camping and you didn't check the weather first and then it rains the whole time that you're camping. That's how I learned to make this recipe when I was a child. Um, so cheating s'mores, just get that marshmallow cream that comes in a jar and chocolate chips or M&Ms or chocolate candies, whatever your favorite is. And then you can have your s'mores without burning anything down. So, we're gonna sing our chowder song again. <clears throat> and again, I'm gonna sing particularly slowly so you guys can learn the words. The fun part about silly songs is not listening to them, it's singing them to other people and hearing them laugh. Um, so I want you guys to be able to learn this song too. Won't you bring back, won't you bring back Mrs. Murphy's chowder? It was tuneful, every spoonful made you yodel louder. After dinner, Uncle Ben used to fill his fountain pen from a bowl of Mrs. Murphy's chowder. There was ice cream, cold cream, benzene, gasoline, soup, Bean string beans floating all around. Sponge cake, beef steak, mistake, stomach ache, cream puffs, earmuffs, many to be found. Silk hats, doormats, bed slats, democrats, cowbells, doorbells, beckon you to dine. Meatballs, fish balls, mothballs, cannonballs, come on in, the chowder's fine. Won't you bring back, won't you bring back? Mrs. Murphy's chowder, it was tuneful, every spoonful made you yodel louder. If they have it where you are, you might find a subway car in a bowl of Mrs. Murphy's chowder. There was ice cream, cold cream, benzene, gasoline, soup, beans, string beans floating all around. Sponge cake, beef steak, mistake, stomach ache, cream puffs, earmuffs, many to be found. Silk hats, doormats, bed slats, democrats, cowbells, doorbells, beckon you to dine. Meatballs, fish balls, mothballs, cannonballs, come on in, the chowder's fine. Won't you bring back, won't you bring back? Mrs. Murphy's chowder, it was tuneful, every spoonful made you yodel louder. My goldfish died the other day, and we embalmed him right away in a bowl of Mrs. Murphy's chowder. There was ice cream, cold cream, benzene, gasoline, soup, bean, string beans floating all around. Sponge cake, beef steak, mistake, stomach ache, cream puffs, earmuffs, many to be found. Silk hats, doormats, bed slats, democrats, cowbells, doorbells, beckon you to dine. Meatballs, fish balls, mothballs, cannonballs, come on in, the chowder's fine. Okay, last time. There was ice cream, cold cream, benzene, gasoline, soup, beans, string beans floating all around. Sponge cake, beef steak, mistake, stomach ache, cream puffs, earmuffs, many to be found. Silk hats, doormats, bed slats, democrats, cowbells, doorbells, beckon you to dine. Meatballs, fish balls, mothballs, cannonballs, come on in, the chowder's fine. It was Miss Murphy's Chowder. Very old song. I don't know where it came from. Earlier I read Scaredy Squirrel Goes Camping. And Scaredy Squirrel had this pre-camping workout that I thought we should review. Pre-camping workout in order to get in shape for camping. So it goes like this. First we're going to stretch up and go side to side. Big stretches here. Again, go side to side. Okay, okay, that part's done. Part two, bending over backwards. I can't do that. Can you do that? Do you want to try to do that? Okay, so first we're going to stand up very straight and we're going to reach up and we're going to bend 
backwards. Yeah. Mm. Whoa. Okay, less successful there. Number three, we're gonna bend forward and touch our toes. That's easy. I can touch my toes. Can you touch yours? Are you touching them? Okay. And last step, number four, we're going to stretch way up tall, way up tall, as tall as you can be. Get up on your toes, a little taller. Tall, tall, tall. Whew. That was a good workout. And Scaredy Squirrel says, that's just the warm up. We need to repeat that 143 times. So let's not, let's not do that. That seems like a bad idea. Okay, next book I wanna share with you is Camping, a Mr. and Mrs. Green adventure. So uh, Mr. and Mrs. Green are alligators and they are happily married and they are so cute and I love them. Mr. and Mrs. Green uh, by Keith Baker. There's lots of books with Mr. and Mrs. Green in them. So I'm gonna read Camping. It was Saturday morning. It was sunny and it was hot. Let's go camping, said Mrs. Green. Mr. Green had never been camping. He was excited. Life with Mrs. Green was full of adventure. We need a tent, said Mrs. Green. A big tent, said Mr. Green, with lots of room. We need sleeping bags, said Mrs. Green, and pillows, said Mr. Green, soft, fluffy pillows. We need food and water, said Mrs. Green, like chocolate bars and marshmallows, said Mr. Green, and soda pop. Oh yes, definitely the soda pop. We need warm clothes, said Mrs. Green, and bunny slippers, said Mr. Green. Do you think you need bunny slippers to go camping? I guess you do, it's on the list. Mrs. Green continued checking her list. We need a camp stove, we need boots, we need a first aid kit, we need flashlights, we need matches, we need hats. We need a harmonica, Mr. Green was a musician. We need paints and paper, Mrs. Green was an artist. And we need a map. A map, asked Mr. Green. We need a map? Yes, this map, said Mrs. Green. I made it last night. Mr. Green began to worry. We're going far away, he thought. There could be dark, mysterious woods, strange, eerie sounds, spooky, glowing eyes, sharp, pointy teeth, and mosquitoes. Mr. Green was not excited anymore. He was scared, and he hated mosquitoes. Rightly so, Mr. Green. But Mrs. Green wasn't scared. She was ready to go. Mr. and Mrs. Green hiked over their welcome mat and down their front steps, past Mr. Marble's rock garden and his barking dog, Boulder, beside their favorite picnic spot where Mr. Green once ate six watermelons, and across Pollywog Bridge, the best fishing spot in town around every pothole and dandelion in Shortcut Alley and through a squeaky back gate that looked and sounded very familiar. Mrs. Green pulled out her map. We will camp here, she said, next to the bird bath. Mr. Green looked closely at the map. He saw the path they had just traveled so they started at home, they went around and down, and back up again through town, and it's very close to where they started. It ended at their backyard, their cozy, comfortable, beautiful backyard. Mr. Green was excited again. The grass around the bird bath was thick and soft. It was the perfect place to set up their tent. 
he would sleep like a salamander. After dinner, they crawled into their sleeping bags. Look at the moon, said Mrs. Green. It's like a giant marshmallow, said Mr. Green. He began to play his harmonica, but he fell asleep before finishing even one song. Mrs. Green felt happy. The sleeping bag was snugly, the stars were twinkling, the frogs were croaking, and best of all, Mr. Green was snoring loudly by her side. Isn't that sweet? So romantic. Now, I wanted to share an activity with you guys. So Mr. Green played the harmonica. Do you guys play the harmonica? I bet most of you probably don't. Do you even have a harmonica? Well, I'm here to help. So here's a little craft you can do at home. What you need is a comb like you do your hair with. Just grab your comb out of the bathroom and you need some wax paper. This is probably something you have in the kitchen. You take your wax paper and you fold it around the comb. And then you're going to put it in your mouth. Don't bite down on it. Just set it gently. And when you blow on it and hum, it's going to make a sound like a harmonica. Now you have to hum, okay? Um, and you just barely touch it with your lips as you blow on it. And this is a really fun thing that you can do while you're sitting around the campfire while you're camping, is everybody can just name a song and then you all sing it together, except you hum it on your harmonica. So we're gonna do Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. This is a really fun game that you can play is when you sing weird songs like Disney songs, I'm not going to do them on TV because then the Disney lawyers will get me. Or you can do your favorite TV show songs um, or your favorite songs from the radio. Um, another fun game is you can hum a song on your fake harmonica and let all of your friends guess what song it is. Like, name that tune. So it's a really fun camping activity, and it's really easy. And it only takes a comb and some wax paper. Very easy activity. And also your dogs look at you funny when you make that noise. Hi, spirit. I'm okay. It was a harmonica. We're good. She's happy now. She was very concerned for a moment there. Uh, I'm going to sing another song. Woke up this morning. Nope, that's the wrong chord. It's okay to make mistakes, mom and dad. Woke up this morning, smiled at the rising sun. Three little birds were by my doorstep, singing a sweet song, melody pure and true, singing, this is my message to you. Sing and don't worry about a thing Cause every little thing is gonna be alright Sing and don't worry about a thing Cause every little thing is gonna be alright I woke up this morning Smiled at the rising sun Three little birds Were by my doorstep Singing a sweet song Melody pure and true 
singing. This is my message to you. Singing, don't worry about a thing. Cause every little thing gonna be alright. Singing, don't worry about a thing. Cause every little thing is gonna be alright. I always like to point out when I make mistakes live on TV because a lot of children think that adults don't make mistakes anymore, that that's something that you outgrow. And it's not. Everybody makes mistakes and it's okay to admit it. All right. That's all the time we've got for our stories today. I hope you enjoyed my camping stories, and I really hope you enjoyed my s'more recipe and that you're going to try it sometime because you know what? It's delicious. It's just as good as actual s'mores if you can't get actual s'mores. Qualifier in there. So I'm going to sing our goodbye song, and then I will see you all next week. So thank you for joining me for our Tulsa City County Library build a reader story time i'm tori and um oh and i almost forgot to tell you we have announced the dates for our summer reading program our summer reading program this year is going to be june 22nd through july 31st that's shorter than normal but it's a weird year um and our program's going to be entirely online this year. So be sure and check tulsalibrary.org for more information about that. Um, here's our goodbye song. Well, goodbye, everybody, see you soon. Well, goodbye, everybody, see you soon. Well, goodbye, everybody, well, goodbye, everybody, well, goodbye, everybody, see you soon. And let's do it on the fake harmonica. <laughs> the dog does not like that at all. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon. Well, goodbye, everybody. Well, goodbye, everybody. Well, goodbye, everybody. See you soon.